You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Saturday Night Live After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show, it's AfterBuzz TV's SNL After Show. That's right, guys. You hear the music? We're back. Yay! Yay! Olympics are over, which means we are back in our hot seats here at AfterBuzz TV. I am your host, Roya Tahiri, and joining me for the first, second time, all three of us are finally together. Yes. Third time, I guess. Or is it second time? Second. This is second. the second time we've second all been together. Second time we've all been together. I'll defer to the lovely lady to my left. Hey, you guys. It's Keaton Markey back here. Um, enjoying it. Uh, this was such a good episode. I really liked it, at least. <sighs> Guys, I have to apologize. I missed several episodes. I was gone, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I'm back. I'm here, and I could not be more excited to be here. In the new studio, by the way. Mm-hmm. Which smells of rich mahogany. It smells amazing <laughs> Rich mahogany. Well, welcome back, Danny. Thanks. Thank you. It's good we're to be excited. back. excited, and uh, we were talking earlier off camera that you weren't that big of a fan of this episode. Hosted by Jim Parson and musical guest Beck. Just Boo. outed me right away. I, it's not that I'm not a fan of the whole episode. There was just, there was, a, I just thought they were going to come in with a bigger bang. There was a lot to be excited about, and I, I feel like it was here. It could have been. Well, like are here. you kidding me? The Ellen opening sketch wasn't a big enough bang for you? It was, that was good. But the Who rest of it, like, you, you had Colin Jost, and is it Jost or Jost? I want to make sure I say this right. It's Colin Jost. It's Jost. Jost. Yeah. Did I say Jost? You said Jost. Jost. Well, you said both. It could go either way. Anyways, (laughs) who I thought he did a great job. Well, I'm excited you two are sitting next to each other because this is going to get very violent. And if you guys agree and disagree, a war of words. So let's just jump right into the cold open then. Yeah. Ellen, with (laughs) played by our favorite Kate McKinnon. Now you know. (laughs) Where Ellen uh, briefly discusses Russia taking over Ukraine, uh, Ukraine, and then starts talking about her hosting the Oscars. And one of my favorite lines was she led into, I hope there's a, someone named Oscar hosting the Ellens <laughs> somewhere around here. Mm-hmm. And then she goes into uh, a segment where Ellen, Ellen's Oscar pranks, where she pranks the actor from Captain Phillips, who's played by Jay Far- uh, Farrell. I'm the pranker now. Yes, I'm, I'm the pranker now. I wonder how old that has gotten for that actor, because literally every single clip like either talking about Captain Phillips or the fact that he's nominated for anything, it's always that look at me, look at me, yeah. look at me. I'm the captain now. I mean, it's his great. It's his 15 seconds. Hopefully, he gets more. I mean, that's his that's his moment. So you know, he's living it up. I did think, but he was, was in a, little... a lot more of the movie than just that. Part. Right, but that's like the, that's the point everybody remembers. That's like the crux point. No, okay. I'm the captain. You guys uh, watched the Oscars, right? Yes. yes. Wasn't that the little preview part where yep. they? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but I did think they, it was overdone. They did it. They did it twice. They spoofed him twice in the show, and I thought that was a little much. Just the first one would have been great. They but... they spoofed him twice. Yeah. No, again, they... during the during the audition process. Mm-hmm. Audition process? Wasn't it during the audition process? Nope. They spoofed that twice. Maybe I'm thinking they of the wrong sense, but they spoofed that twice nope. in it, the same episode. I think you they, might no, be they, they only spoofed <laughs> that. That's, uh, Jay Farrow was in it again, but it wasn't that particular act. Keep going. Yeah. yeah I'm going to prove so, this. They did say Keep only going. Bazinga twice in this episode that I wow. counted. <laughs> did you, so, are you? Which ones are you counting? The opening. I'm not counting the uh, the teaser for the show. Okay. I'm talking about the opening monologue and then. When he yelled it at the end of the song? You could even hardly hear it. I could hear it when he said this. I could hear it, but yeah. like I feel like it kind of it got it got well, we'll lost. Get, in we'll get we'll, we'll get into we'll it. Get, okay. Let's get continue with Ellen. Ellen. So I love when Kate McKinnon plays <laughs> Ellen. Ellen, and uh, when that opened up, I thought Keaton. You know, we were supposed to be on yesterday, but we weren't, and I thought Keaton wasn't going to join us. And I, the whole time, I'm like, oh, well, Keaton's going to miss out on the whole Ellen. The Ellen. <laughs> I it literally Kate McKinnon playing Ellen is like one of my favorite things that S, one of my favorite sketches that SNL has. Absolutely. Um, it's, I think she's so funny. I do, I do think that her voice is a little off. It's not very much, it doesn't sound like Ellen, but her timing is so Ellen 
that like it makes up for it. For her me. timing and her manners. Yeah, yeah, it was a little bit like mm-hmm. a, that Russian accent kind of came out like a little bit. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just, or yeah, her voice just is is not spot on for Ellen. But yeah, everything else with her time, her comic timing and her mannerisms, and if she's doing a lot of the writing for these sketches, then they have it nailed. <laughs> yeah. um, I, what do you think I Ellen thinks of it? it? Oh, Ellen's oh, yeah. had her on. Ellen has had Kate McKinnon on her show as Ellen. Right, but con- in interview but track. continuing to do it, you think oh, Ellen's Oh, I'm like, sure Ellen, Ellen loves, loves it. it. Oh, yeah. absolutely. How could you not? Like, it's it's so well done. And it's not like she's making fun of her. It's more of just paying homage and stretching the It's like the yeah. highest form of, flattery is the highest absolutely. form of respect. Absolutely. Like, Oprah yeah. loved it when they did, when they spoofed Oprah. Yes, on she it too. So <laughs> I can't right. imagine you, like, if somebody spoofed me on SNL, I would be... I would say thank you. I wouldn't be pissed. <laughs> um, yeah, it was great. I have to say something though. I think this okay. is a little weird. There's a trend we're seeing is the host coming out uh, as a as part of the cold open. I like, I like it. it. Do you guys like it? I yeah. do. Because there's it's getting a lot of like feedback where people are saying I don't want to see them before the opening monologue. I, w- I don't want them to be involved. I do. I li- and especially the character that that Jim Parsons oh, played. Oh well, he yeah. nailed it. Was Let's separate that. So for a spot. <laughs> but just on. in general, the idea of it. I want to know. You guys are for it. Yes. I'm okay I'm with it. I'm kind of against it. I like it. What, I want them to like come it? out and have their moment. Like it's like you're hosting, especially somebody. It's their first time hosting. The first time I want to see Jim Parsons is like walking out. You know what I mean? Like, but Jim Parsons didn't say live from New York. I think that should stay the same. Or yeah. a cast member says live from New York. It's Saturday Night Live. I just like the moment. And if it was me, I I, I wouldn't want to come out as a character until, like until after I have my. This is my well. Moment. I'm, I'm no, sure. What happened to you? Oh, no, gone. you went away <laughs> and you think got about it. Mean. Okay, hold on. Let me paint this picture for you. You get asked to host SNL. Your first time ever. They okay. fly to New York. You get to have a moment. I mean, you're going to be there for the whole week. You're rehearsing. You get to come out and have a moment, moment as Roya Tahiri. But you were going to come out before that, and people will see you in another character. But this is the thing. If I'm going to be hosting SNL for the first time or any time, I want to be used as much as, as, much possible. as possible. I want to play with. Mm-hmm. I want to play as okay. much as possible with those people. So if they ask me to be in the cold open, and there's a great character that I feel really comfortable and That's strong an excellent playing, point. I'm going to say yes. I just think that moment is cool, and I want it to be preserved sometimes. Okay. It just well, seems like that's a valid trend there. Point, they're valid point, but, but that's I, all. I think it depends on who the host is and if they're strong enough to be able to carry the yes. show. Because when I saw this opening sketch with uh, Jim in it, I was excited. It, it got me amped up for the entire uh, Really? Yeah, for the well, entire he, show. Okay, so now let's talk about this. He nailed Johnny Weir. Yes. Nailed yes. it. Nailed it. My <laughs> favorite part was when they switched, they kept switching the camera back to him and something changed, like yes. he had on the first thing, yeah. like, <laughs> he had on the headpiece. That he nailed that. That was fantastic. I I wish I because I know they did the little Tara Lipinski bit with her in her in his pocket, <laughs> yeah. but I really wish like one of one of the um, characters like or like Noel. I would have met. I could could have seen coming out as Tara Lipinski, and they could have done like a like little, coming out of his jacket. Yeah, like, do you mean, I don't like, know a something. little green screen type of like I they don't do know. like they do with the Tonker Bell. Like they did with 80 as Tom Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like do like a little. Like... Either that or even just like not and not be like that she's in his pocket. Like have her come out and have them both be like, you know, bantering and matchy matchy because that's kind of how they were the whole Olympics. Well, but, maybe you know, because it's an opening sketch. Yeah, they, they didn't want to get too much mm-hmm. into it. Maybe that was the, uh, the whole thing. Um, any other comments about the opening, the cold open, guys? Uh, just just her manner and how she was sitting in the chair. I, yeah. I, I, I laughed every time she moved. And she was like doing like half yoga poses yeah. like on the side <laughs> of the chair. That was great. One of the lines she said was, 12 years a slave, based on me working on the show. I love that little Don't, line. It got a little yeah. dark, like the jokes she made about that. I thought that was really like, it, it was it added a cool element. Well, it, was a, it was about the dancing part. Yeah, and she was like, she, I wish I wouldn't have danced in my first, first episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But you have to think, like, maybe that's something that, because yeah. Ellen's had, like, some back issues in the past couple of years, too, and there have been times where she has been on bed rest and still hosted the show or not been allowed to dance or move. Um, so it, it, that that was funny to me, if you know kind of Ellen's backstory, that, you know, she's you know she's getting up there and she just doesn't want to dance anymore. Why did she, <laughs> why did she dance on that first why? episode? Because her fans demand it now. <laughs> Oh, man. So going into the show, before we get to the opening monologue, we see a, a new addition to the opening credits, Colin Jost. Yes, we do. He's on there. And I, I had to double check because I wasn't sure since he's a head writer if that means he gets to be automatically a featured or if he's a, uh, a player on the show. But he Which was, one was it? it was a, he was a player. Yeah, featured. it wasn't. It wasn't yeah. just like it wasn't like a featured. It was. It's, he's official player on the show. Oh no, no, no! I have it backwards. It's the other way around. He's with um, Beck Bennett. He's in that category. Okay. Yeah, I had it backwards. So okay. he's with the newbies. He's with the newbies. Yeah. Well, as he should be. Yeah. You know, even though I think it's a, you know, it's a pretty big gig getting offered Weekend Update and pulling um, yeah. in for Seth, and like taking Seth Meyers' place. 
I, you got to pay your dues a little bit. And I know he's been writing for a while. I just went into some weird accent there. You got to pay your dues. You got to pay your dues. <laughs> you got to pay your dues. Um, but yeah, I, I think it would have been weird if he got bumped up immediately. Okay. That, that's true. I mean, he is the head writer, though, so I wouldn't really hold it against him if he was. Well, you know, I still, I still just found out what his name was. <laughs> <laughs> Bird. <laughs> so we go into the opening monologue of Jim Parsons, and he sings about how people confuse him as the character he plays on The Big Bang Theory. Sheldon, not going to lie, when I first saw that he was hosting SNL, I was a little bit worried because I don't like his character, Sheldon, on The Big Bang Theory. Okay. And so, therefore, I was afraid that's how he is going to be. Yeah. But he proved me. Well, wrong, if you think so. back to it, even um uh, I think it was it was either Justin Timberlake or it was Jimmy Fallon on Jimmy Fallon's um hosting episode, they did this family feud mm-hmm. and um Jimmy Fallon was actually playing, playing Jim Shel- Parsons, yeah. Yeah. but he was Sheldon and yeah. they were calling it and so it's like even SNL did it and mm-hmm. we we commented on that. We're like, "Why was he being Sheldon, but called himself Jim Parsons because they're not the it, same person. Well, the thing about Jim Parsons, though, is it, whatever character he plays, he kind of has like the same voice, a little that's bit of true. like the same angle that he takes the character with, and that's mm-hmm. kind of his thing. I, I think this was by request of him. He wants to be separated from this guy because when Big Bang Theory ends, which is probably on the down... He will never have to work again because... <laughs> he will never have to work again, but of course he wants to work <laughs> yes, again as, as a passionate actor. So he wa- I think he wants to like... That was a little bit of him saying like, I don't want to... you like, I'm not that guy. I can be a different guy. Yeah. And I think this is a little bit of like Let his coming go. out party. And the That's wo- why I want his moment to be preserved in his opening monologue. Well, it still was. Now you see my passion. No. <laughs> but he was so different from Sheldon in that opening mm-hmm. monologue, uh, in that first sketch, that I was like, okay, look, he's yeah. not Sheldon. This is an actor. Yeah. In any chance I can see Kenan Thompson as Bill Cosby makes <laughs> my day. I didn't think he did a very good Bill Cosby. Oh, come oh, whatever, on. Whatever, he does whatever, great. whatever, whatever. But even when he came, Keenan came out as Bill Cosby, he looked like he couldn't believe he was playing Bill Cosby. <laughs> Honestly, the entire time. Even though he probably rehearsed it, he came out, he's just like, I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I thought it was really cool to see Jim Parsons' uh, theater experience come mm-hmm. out in this opening monologue. He'd be great on Broadway. Yeah, well, he went for school for theater, so... Right, yeah. but I mean, he'd be great, like, starring in, like, a okay. big, like, yeah. the next big thing, like, when Big Bang Theory's done, I could see, time. you know, I could really see him on Book of Mormon. Yeah. As... <laughs> Rubbing in her face that you got it to go see that. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Go see Book of Mormon Thanks, if you Keith. get a yeah. chance, people. So we had a, kind of some special appearances, I guess you could say. Jay Farrell played, uh, um, what was... Ac- Wow, why am I... I spilled his Steve name. Steve Urkel. How Steve Urkel. How, I have no idea what I wrote here. You're probably <laughs> trying to write uh, Barkhad Abdi, the guy from Captain Phillips. Barkhad. No, no. Steve Urkel. <laughs> Steve Jaleel Urkel. White. Oh, I think I was spilling his actual character, <laughs> or his real name. You know what? That's another one to add to his repertoire, because I, I think he did well at it. Makes... I think he did, too. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I, I thought he also did good as um, Bach... Barkhad Abdi. Abdi. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and then we had George Kazanza come out. Oh, that was the best one. Yeah, mm-hmm. Bobby Moynihan. Bobby, Bobby Moynihan kicking butt as George Kazanza. Yep. <laughs> Taryn Killen as the Fonz. Oh, he looked good as the Fonz. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No? I mean, I love Taryn, and I think he's he's super hot, and I'm very happy him and Colby Smulders are together. They're an adorable couple, but I didn't think he was that good as the Fonz. But, you know, it was all, like, it, it wasn't, they weren't trying to be spot on, I think, with those characters. It was more mm-hmm. in jest. And, right, but what's um, funny is because all of them were saying they weren't that guy. And then my favorite part was because Keenan mumbles as he's walking off, but I am that guy. <laughs> and that's why I liked it so much, Keenan as mm-hmm. Bill Cosby. Now, my overall uh, spirit, Blah, 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 blah. You enjoyed it. Um, I really liked this monologue. I thought it was, un- like, it worked. Even though they did do it with Tina Fey, I like when they have their cast members come out and sing. And, and even though in Tina Fey they danced, mm-hmm. but it was kind of nice to see them all in that light again. I know some you know? people Some people get really pissed when the, the opening monologue yeah. becomes a musical number, yeah, but th- I really like it. I think it's, it's, SNL is a place for an actor, any actor or anybody who comes and hosts it to kind of do the things that they never get to do and have fun. And that's, a, that's being on Broadway is very difficult with lots of mm-hmm. schedules and scheduling. And so that's something people can't do very often. So in New York, when in Rome, why not do a musical when number, in Rome. right? Yeah. Well said. I give, you know what, and I, I have never really experienced Jim Parker. I haven't seen a lot of things he's been in outside of Big Bang Theory. So I wanted to kind of see, and I didn't really you know. you seen the Muppet movie? And I was just about to say that. Man. Listen, I thought he did great. I'm just a oh, solid high B for Muppet. me. <laughs> this one over here. <laughs> Miss, I want to be on Broadway. <laughs> Do ya? Okay. Bazinga, let's move on. Bazinga. Bazinga. Okay. Uh, Peter Pan is the next sketch. 
Uh, Peter Pan comes to the children, but not with Tinkerbell because she's feeling under the weather. So he brings her sister Tonkerbell, <laughs> which for some reason my subtitles wrote uh, Taco Bell. Taco Bell. Yeah. That's so, amazing. At one point, I put a slash until I looked it up, and it was Tonker Bell. I was Tonker Bell. Uh, I almost feel like I mean Jim Par. Like you forget that Jim Parsons was even in the sketch. She yeah, was so. She was so, so good. good. Yeah. Uh, somebody spoofed. I wrote. So, somebody said something on the internet about like I want a shirt. I would buy a shirt that says "You just got tonked." And, like a, like a whole new yeah. movement mm-hmm. thing. I thought it was great. Yeah, I hope they can bring this character back. On she its was own. so good. And do you know what? Did you notice that Kate McKinnon has, has been in all through like the opening sketch, the opening monologue, and then this sketch? She's been one, two, three. Wow. And I I wanted to like count how many she was actually in, but she was in tons of the sketches this episode. That's true. She really was. She was Wendy and. Um, I loved uh, Tonker Bell's line that says, okay, fancy baby. <laughs> <laughs> I like what she said, uh, the comment about the Lost Boys. I'm trying to remember how she worded it. She said, Lost Boys, they had no trouble finding my ass. Like, yeah, you know I mean? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I loved when Gus Gus came in in the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gus Gus. Uh, so did you, what good would sketch. you guys rate? I thought it was a good one for Aidy Bryant. It was great for her, and she nailed her part. She did, and yeah. she carried it so well. Yeah, without her. And it was kind of like a ghetto Tonker Bell. Like she mm-hmm. got ghetto at some parts. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, it was good. It changed for me. And it, um, I wish it would have gotten a little darker, because I think there's more to that character. So I hope they bring it back and do more with some version of that yeah. you know, in some way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was cool to kind of see them do somewhat of a special effect with uh, having the, the little Mar- high yeah, five. Yeah, the little high five. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. even like, like missed it. <laughs> <laughs> but it, you know, it's cool that you know technology is obviously changing, and for SNL to be able to bring in those type of effects in the live television broadcasts, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. And I like when they take risks like that. Um, and I, you know, I thought even though they did have that one little mishap when they didn't actually touch, yeah, uh, when they high five. But it was cool to see Jim Parsons talking to the little Tinkerbell. Obviously, that that spin was his kind of point of reference and mm-hmm. that's why they had that there um, for her to lean on but I, I really enjoyed the sketch I would say I would give it um, a solid like a B plus yep, just because exactly 80 just have. kicked his butt but Jeez. I thought the other people like kind of it, it was a little lacking where are you at? are you in the A's I'm in the A minus that's not that far yeah, off. You said, well, you said G's like you we're a whole letter apart. The way you're setting it up sounds like you wanted to give it a higher grade. And then oh, I'm going to give it a D. Look, I don't just give away my A's, right? Yeah, A's are hard to get, Roya. can't just give wow. those out. Those are gold stars. Just <laughs> got a silver. Okay. All right. Well, Did fine. you watch the Olympics? Okay, pumpkin. You can't just hand out gold medals. <laughs> I just got tonked. All right. <laughs> so the next sketch is the Bird Bible. I loved this. I don't know if you guys liked yeah. it, but I thought it was so. I want to know whose mind this came Kate from. Kate McKinnon was, was in it again. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. so, and she she was my favorite part. She was the best part about that, it. You're and right. then at the end, uh, he gives him a look. Mike gives him a kind of like a look towards his son. Like I just I loved this sketch. Was it the one uh, he mentions? Oh, that the three wise birds should have yeah. been owls. And he goes, <laughs> "Let's just." What did he say? Just, just take it how it goes. It, the kid says it'd be cooler if these three wise, wise men, men were owls. owls. And he kind of looked at him he like goes, he was yeah. an idiot. <laughs> okay, let's keep just keep reading. <laughs> uh, it, it was as though Mike wrote the sketch, and he be. was like they were giving him crap for it, and therefore they kind of just played off of that. Yeah, and he wanted to keep it. In he that. like wrote it in. Yeah. yeah. Can I say this? Mike kind of looks like a bird. He so does kind of look like a bird. It could come from like maybe this was like something he's has happened in his life. I don't know, but whoever's brain that came from, I applaud it because I don't know. You guys probably didn't like as much as me, but that is an A minus for me. I love you it. gave that an A minus. Yep, that is a great digital short. Cause did you not watch the whole thing? I did I watch did. the whole thing. Right, right, and you couldn't look away, could you? Cause it was just random. It was so weird. I exactly. Think if it, I I gave it a B minus. Okay. Um, just because I it just it kind of it fell short for me. There are there are bits that I was like, oh, if they get, it if it was consistent throughout the whole sketch, uh-huh. I would have given it an A, but I don't think it was consistent. That's and fine, that little Katie. boy kind of bothered me. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> did he? <laughs> I know. I Are don't, you scared of him? Is that why you went down to? No, B-? I just, I really, it's, I don't know. Like, use a cast member. I'm sorry. I know that's weird. Like maybe the, have like Noel sit yeah, down Noelle and Kyle sit down Mooney as like, like a little girl. Sit yeah. low in the couch. I okay. felt like the it would have been better chemistry, but you know. It would have added a lot. You could have done more with it. Yeah. But it was just a short. Like if you I'm, if you put cast members as the kids, then it could have been it should have been a live sketch. Yeah. No, you I agree. I mean? yeah. It yeah. could have been a live sketch. That if it was a live sketch, that would have been probably more entertaining. And then yeah. maybe you set up the table and you have Bobby Moynihan like as again, Jesus in a bird suit. Then you see <laughs> what I mean? Like you could get you could get going. But with then this. it would take away from what it was trying to be. It was like an info. Uh, yeah, info marshal. So yeah. it wouldn't have been as the same story. What did you What did you give it, Roy? I gave it a B. Only I didn't wasn't a big fan of it, but I gave it a B because it had the artwork in it. 
And I yeah. thought that would have taken a lot more time to do. <laughs> yeah, and then they're trying to find different birds. So I gave She's it a B. I thought it was B really for effort. <laughs> yeah. It was, right. good, it was a good idea. I really enjoyed the next one. Uh, Investigation Discovery Channel. Killer Files. <laughs> the investigation of the 90s killer. The um, dance floor Mark killer. Alan Henry. The dance floor killer. Yeah. Because you like to watch murderers. But you don't have the balls to do them. Do uh, the ball, do them yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I really like. I I thought Jim Parsons kicked butt as he this did. character. Mm-hmm. It was so funny, um, and I loved that they used the older like camera styles to as they went to the different like shows or uh-huh. different decades, and it just it it didn't wow me. I don't know. It was no Tonker Bell for some reason. Here's my thing with it. Because I, I have one glaring thing with this. It's a great sketch. It's a great idea. And Jim Parsons was as creepy as you can possibly get. Like he did so a great job. So creepy. <laughs> you give away, and I, I read this online as well. Like they kind of gave away in the opening part, like the opening part of the sketch, what the punchline was. That like he's like the creepy murderer that's not dancing, mm-hmm. and it was just it was just flat. It was the same joke the yeah. whole time. Like mm-hmm. it did, the joke didn't change. You know what I mean? Yeah. They added funny one-liners like he, the moonwalk, Michael Jackson discovered when he, you know, backtracked to take a look at a victim. Like Kate McKinnon. But you know, the only, yes, Kate McKinnon. <laughs> well, the, like the whole cast is in that yeah. sketch almost. The only thing, like if you just listened to this sketch, it wouldn't be funny. It was a completely visual, a visual mm-hmm. joke. Yeah. And I feel like with, with the writers, the types of writers that they have, which I know are super talented at SNL, I want to be able to not. I want to be able to have to be able to close my eyes and listen to a sketch and still get some of the jokes and laugh. Okay. But you couldn't do that with this sketch. You're asking a lot. Not I a mean, lot. Keaton, you couldn't. You're demanding a lot over you here. You know what? SNL has been on for a very, very long time, and yeah. Um, he was very creepy though. I yes. mean, like I would like that was. I yeah. don't, you know, he was almost unrecognizable, like the way his hair and like his glasses were. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The part that really creeps me out when he, when he first talked, he goes, "I'm Mark Allen Henry." And God has a plan for me. <laughs> like, yes. That was freaky. Oh. Is that something a murderer would say? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh. And I love how he got MTV gave him his own show. And <laughs> the only slip up he made was he said, I'm the dance floor killer mm-hmm. on live TV. Yes. And at first I thought the show was maybe going to be like a spoof off of dance, like people break dancing and yeah. then they just die or something like that. But then it made sense. As well. Who did they say he was going to be on Dancing with the Stars with at the end? Oh, oh, Deborah Messing. Deborah Messing, yeah. yes. Which which was a nice little way to put a bow on the sketch and wrap it up. For me, it was in the Bs. Um, probably like a B minus. See, I gave it, whoa. Ouch, Keaton. I gave it an A. You guys are so, okay. Like, Don't say you guys. Don't loop me in with that. I didn't give an A on this. I was, a B, I was bordering on your a minus. letter. I'll bump it down to A minus. Right. I liked, like you were saying, how they made it into the 90s video style. I like the style. I'm more about the style and the creativity behind yeah. it all. Yeah, okay. 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 And okay. the creeping, I was afraid to give it anything lower because he might come and find me. I'd break out of jail. <laughs> the next one. Oscar profile, 12 Years a Slave, the casting. The best sketch, I think. Hands down. Of the night, if not of the night, of the year, of the sea, of the sea. Oh, that's, that's okay, stretching. I, I would give it of the year. Since 2014, this has been the best oh. sketch. I think it was hilarious. It was so well done. That. It was so current. And, oh, it was, and it was SNL crossed the line a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, and I love when they cross the line a little bit because you're even watching it and you're like, oh God, can I even laugh at this? this oh my God, like, this is hilarious. And it makes you wonder, what did they do in those auditions? <laughs> Are <laughs> like, you on the same page with us? That this I am. This is the best was, sketch of the night. Mm, I have okay. another favorite. Okay. I have another favorite. Don't it tell was us one of my favorites. There. I'm going to throw water at you. No, I'm not saying it wasn't. It was one of my favorites. Okay. I don't have just one. I've watched it three I times can't. since <laughs> yeah. I watched it. <laughs> she paused the Oscars to watch it right. again. I did. I did. Before and the show people. <laughs> During, well, we didn't pause the Oscars. It was on commercial break. And we were like, you guys have to see this, this sketch that they spoofed on SNL. And we like pulled it up on our DVR. I, this, was an ele- this was an element for me that I liked. And I know that this is something that not everybody that listens across uh, you know, the world and, and the states can relate to. But in an audition room, when they change something on you last minute, that which often happens. Yes. Um, they, uh, even Vanessa and um, Cecily behind the table, played it like that's how, that's how it happened. Oh, they did like, it so yeah. well. Oh, you know what? Actually, you're going to read for Hostile Slave Owner. And it changes on you like that. And you have to adapt. Can so, we get a little improv in yeah. here, please? A little improv. Okay, yeah, great. Just a little, the real, <laughs> like the reality of how that played out down to even like, that's that's an audition room, you know what I mean? That yeah. was fun for me <laughs> to see. 
Because that's happened. You don't. You know what I mean? I that's really what, what mean. it happens like. Well, and so. I think the other thing that, that brought it so much energy is you know all those cast members have been through a situation, maybe not exactly like that, but very similar. Oh, so yeah. they could mm-hmm. all relate to it, and they've probably <laughs> all joked about it. And when they went in there and were, like, <laughs> writing the sketch, I'm sure they're all like, you guys, this one time when I went to audition, I'm sure that's what it kind of Oh, yeah, into. and it just snowballed. The awkwardness of the moment, like, you felt it as a viewer. And yeah. that's why I love this sketch. Like, you felt, oh, my oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. And Jay Farrell back just, like, <laughs> mean <laughs> Bugging him with the eyes. I no, felt like I, I was in the room. Word. It made me feel awkward on my couch, which I appreciated, you know? <laughs> that's what that's what I love about SNL, and that's kind of why a lot of the old the earlier seasons resonated with a lot of people because it did cross that line. Yeah. And it hasn't been doing that as much lately. So the fact that it brought it back, I, I just loved it. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. Eddie Murphy used to do stuff like this all the time to <laughs> just make you so uncomfortable. But which is it great. Was that's that's ratings. Yeah. This is the best sketch of the night. I don't know how Roya does not agree. Uh, it's let's not talk a, about, it's one of the top ones for sure. I let's just talk can't. about I mean, Bobby. I'm sure it has an A. Let's talk yeah, about Bobby. Bobby. <laughs> let's talk about Bobby at the end. Bobby. What do you think of Bobby coming in at the end? I, is this a trick question? No. <laughs> I one, want to know what you thought about it. I liked it. Why? You go on. Go it ahead. was my least. I, I didn't Brooks like. Brooks was they, my favorite I character. Yeah, out Brooks of all was them. the best. But I didn't like how I didn't like the button with the waffles. I didn't think it was that funny. I thought. <laughs> Somebody it, want a waffle? <laughs> I thought I was like, you guys could have ended it so much better than that. That's probably Kay. why I don't remember. This the, is why I was asking because you came in with Brooks, which was the best part of the sketch, yeah. and I wanted it to end with something that was equally as I good. Agree. Like like maybe Brooks saying a line and uh, Jay like getting mad at him. You know what I mean? And then like Brooks like. You know I what wanted I mean? Brooks to like like. Like look like he was saying it and then bleep it out and oh, then Jay Fair to just take him out. <laughs> yes, like, like I that would have been a funnier like button than than Bobby. I thought it was funny that they had Bobby come in, but they needed a better button with one of the guys who was very uncomfortable. I yeah, think. him or Mike mm-hmm. would have worked. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I liked it. Or John, anyway. or John, because he's like this super skinny little like unassuming. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I thought that would have been good. Any one of them, to be honest with you. So you guys gave it an A then, obviously. Oh, yeah. A plus. A plus. A plus. Awesome. So we move on on to uh, Beck's performance. Um, He's actually been on, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six times. This would have been his seventh time. I mean, since 06. Undoubtedly a seasoned performer and uh, and great live. I'm not personally like a Beck fan. Mm-hmm. Me neither. But as far as music, like musically talented, they're, I mean, you can tell they know, they, they've been around for how long? Have they been a band? Since 90. Two? 89? For a long time. Early 90s, I think. Middle 90s. They've been a band for a long time. Mm-hmm. And they know what the... You know what I mean? They... That might be really long. I think I forgot that we're in 2014. Yeah. Late 90s. But they're... It's, it just is not my taste. But they killed it. Yeah, I mean... The second one, when we get there. The I second some, one I was better. The second one. Okay. It was Ooh. hauntingly beautiful. Do you want to just talk about it now? Yes, let's, let's do just it. talk about it. Yeah. The, the second one was hauntingly beautiful for me. Down to the lighting, the orchestra behind him, like the the feeling of it. Even if you're not like I said, like I'm not somebody who listens to Beck all the time, you could feel the emotion of that song. For me, that was a great performance. Yeah, usually the, they put the more popular, like the the one that's going to be kind of better earlier in the show. And so I thought it was interesting that they put they saved that mm-hmm. one, the the bigger production. I felt like for the second yeah um, performance, uh, and yeah. I, I don't know back that well, so I can't like really say much on it. But I like the second one better than the first one. All right, they did a good job. They yeah. did a good job. What do you guys take about the uh, artists artists that they're getting on the show? What What's your idea or your comments about that? I like that they're going a little like they're mixing up with not just like somebody who's current top forty mm-hmm. a list mm-hmm. all over the radio, but they're mixing like the national next week. I love the national. I love the national for a long time. So to bring in a band like that that maybe not all of the audience has heard or you know is familiar with i'm a fan of that absolutely I like that. Yep. yeah I, I feel the same way about about that and it's it's fun when they do kind of let these bands show what they got that maybe haven't had such a national platform before mm-hmm. um and you know what a way to to launch you know into superstardom than snl well there's so much good there's so so much good music out there and not all of it is going to play on your radio station mm-hmm. so to pull in a band that somebody might not hear to an audience like you said like it's such a platform oh and i love how they like with the bands that they it's like so multi-generational who they bring in and it allows kind of different generations who might not know who beck is or who you know whoever is to be able to learn from learn about that band by watching snl because mm-hmm. they have a lot of younger viewers i think now yeah no definitely it's it's i like 
uh, with uh, Haim. They were a band that I, I didn't even Haim. know yeah. about, and then I'm, now I'm a big fan of theirs. Yeah, they, they are, they're from L.A. too. Beck became Dang. a band in the early 1990s. Perfect. So Good I was job. right. I just didn't remember the year. Good. You got the right. Just wanted to fact Good. check for you guys out there. <laughs> Thank you. Just fact checking. Okay. So let's move on to Weekend Update with Cecily Strong. And Colin Jost. And Colin Jost. It's his big debut. Yes. Oh, and how did you guys feel about that? He was so green. He uh, he was like, like okay. awkwardly I could see him looking at the teleprompter. He looked at the wrong camera first. However, I, I feel like he settled in. I mean, he's been involved with the show for enough time that he settled in comfortably, I think. Can we just, I just want to say Cecily knocked it out of the park. She could be hosting Weekend Up by herself. Like, Every, I, I think everybody was wondering, like, oh, is she going to be able to do it without Seth Meyers? I thought she led that weekend update and that interview um, that she had at the end yeah. so well. She was hysterical. She hit every moment and kind of overshadowed the new guy. Yeah, she did. Mm -hmm. But rightfully so, because she's been there for a few episodes. Yeah. And I feel like now that Seth is gone, she kind of, like, blossomed a little bit. Yeah, like my a God, little, like so a little baby good. butterfly. She's not I didn't anymore. like her with I didn't really like her when she was with Seth, but now I was like, oh my God, she's amazing. Mm -hmm. I, I loved her. Yeah. I agree. No, it's definitely she I I just I feel bad because you can tell Colin was probably nervous. The entire oh time. absolutely. And and I'm gonna like I don't wanna like rip him apart. Um but it just he'll get they'll get into the swing of it. I feel yeah. like he, they will. So I don't know if you guys know this but he's, he's actually cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this, but he's cute. Yeah. He's perfectly <laughs> synchronized. But he's actually, he's uh, the one that wrote Drunk Uncle and mm -hmm. the girl you wish you hadn't started a conversation with at a party. Which Cecily which, also which nailed. Yes. So Cecily, yes. yeah. They have chemistry. Exactly. Yeah. So It'll be great. So hopefully they'll bring Dr Drunk Uncle back out with him soon. Oh, uh, I'm sure Anyways, that's in predictions. So, um, but let me First get back guests. to this tab. Charles Barkley and Shaquille O'Neal. Which was a slam dunk. No pun intended. Huh? See that? What I did there? I it wasn't like their best. Yeah, I didn't think it was their best. No, it was either. a slam dunk. Where I was, I was going to finish my sentence. Oh, I, just wanted you, I just wanted you to validate my pun. Uh, the first <laughs> time they brought them out, it went over like with rave reviews all yeah. across the internet. It, you know what I mean? Like it was great. Um, this one wasn't as good for me. I agree. Because Jay, I don't know where Jay Farrow was. Like in his cross side, he just forgot like his lines or whatever. But he like he missed that one line. Yeah. He was. It was the timing for me was off, and it seemed like Keenan like. He Keenan wasn't once. even on 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 in character. I felt like Keenan was trying to keep. Yeah, his Charles Barkley accent wasn't as good yeah, as it usually good. is. Mm -hmm. Something was off for huh. it. Off so a little the bit Keenan for train it. that I've been on is looking kind of cozy now to you guys, huh? No, no, no. Because no, he, no. no, no. It was just this one little thing. <laughs> fluke. There's a fluke. But the best line, well, my favorite line, was he said uh, something about a gun, and and Jay Farrow, Shaquille O'Neal goes. Says something about a gun, and then Charles Barkley goes, "That was not a gun. That was a chalupa, and you ate it." And he just kind of, he kind of does his little <laughs> robot thing with his cross eye. I love, I giggled. I thought they were a fun bunch. They had a good energy. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jay was definitely cracking. It seemed like under what, or Keenan and Jay, he they did, both. Keenan stopped and held his nose at one point. Like, that's right. I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So. <laughs> well, and I, I, I felt like the interview just didn't go well either. It was, it would, the, the three of them all, like I just didn't, I wasn't feeling it. They were looking at the wrong cameras. Yeah. They weren't fully in character. You could actually see their eyes reading the teleprompter <laughs> or like the cue cards, whatever. So yeah, I thank God they ended it with that strong, strong my one of my favorite characters. Jebediah so. Atkinson. Jebediah. I have to say, okay, so this is this am I correct? This is the third time we've seen Jebediah? Third time we've seen Jebediah. First one nailed it. Mm -hmm. And that's when he was screaming, yeah. nobody knew yep. what to expect. He's throwing second one fell short. Yeah. I remember talking about this. I thought this one was on par with the oh, first one. Yes. If not if not better. If I not this better. This one was so good. This yeah. yeah, this was great. It was a little more relatable, like the topic for people. Exactly. It was more current. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oscars happened. You know what I mean? Like it there was it was uh for me, whenever there's a mess up, and I know they didn't intention, you can't plan this, but like when he threw the card and it flipped and landed, and he goes, I couldn't do it again if I tried. So it happens on live yeah. TV, and he yeah. deviates. Yeah, I. For me, that pulls me in more. Oh, me too, because yeah. it just is like, okay, these guys are seasoned professionals. No matter what happens, they're gonna go along with yes. it, and they're gonna they're gonna make it good. Yes. And Taryn is so good at that, especially <laughs> I think. Um, he very rarely breaks, and if he sees someone else breaking in the scene, he kind of plays off of it and like makes it another joke. Yeah, which mm -hmm. he's so good at doing that, and I, I really love him. Definitely, I really love him. I really love Taryn. Can, can we can we pause on Taryn while we're talking about our love for Taryn real quick? Okay. Who are your two? I want to ask you guys. Who are your two? Your favorite guy and your favorite girl on the show? Beck Bennett, Cecily Strong. Uh, Kate McKinnon and Taryn Killam. Oh, Kate, Kate McKinnon, McKinnon and Taryn Killam. So that's that's mine also. <laughs> 
Like I will any sketch those two are in, I don't ever hate. Yeah. Well, I, I agree with you guys too. I just you, I. <laughs> no, I just, it's it's just what you. I That's mean, why we sat on this side of the table. Yeah, and exactly. Stay over there, guys. I'm just <laughs> curious. I, w- I would love to know for those of you that are listening and those of you guys that are watching. Uh, let us know. Like, who's your favorite guy and your favorite girl? It doesn't matter if they're seasoned, if they're a featured player. Like, I'm kind of curious. I want to know what people. What people think? What's our general audience feel? You know? Yeah, and where can they do that, Danny? You can comment on iTunes. You guys can comment on YouTube. You can tweet us all directly. We'll give you our handles at the end of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but let us know whatever way you can get on After Buzz TV and join the chat roll and tell us live like, while we're talking because we're reading that. You can even call in. You if can you really call want in. To. What's that number, Roya? I don't have it on me, but thank you, uh, Marissa. <laughs> you got the number back there for us. I don't have it written down in front of me. Or and I do see you can call four two four two five three zero five zero four. Perfect. I don't even remember my own phone number, so that's <laughs> great. Cool. Yeah, so rate us on iTunes. You know, five stars would be awesome. Comment on YouTube. We are commenting back. For example, uh, we've been talking, or I've been talking to Joseph Boza when he commented about Drake. So, Joseph, let us know what you think about this episode with uh, Jim Parsons as the host. Uh, same with you, Joanne, who commented about Kate McKinnon's Bieber uh, impression was great. Uh, and, by the way, Keen, I don't know if you saw this, but Quinn Tur- Tortillo? Has a, a kind Did you of, say Quentin Tarantino? Has no, Torahilo. Oh, Torahilo. Okay. I'm so sorry, Quentin. I messed that up for you. But he says uh, he doesn't know if we are Cecily Strong and Vanessa, or if it's you know who's his biggest crush. So, wait, crazy, right? You want me to read the whole thing? Yeah, too? I, I, I can't what? decide if I have a bigger crush combo on Cecily and Vanessa or Roy and Keaton. <gasps> Although Jonah and Leo too. Anyway, Roy and Keaton probably have my favorite chemistry out of all the hosts I've heard on Afterbus. Sorry, Danny. See, you missed out. That's okay. I've been gone for a while. It's Maeve. okay. He'll just make us yeah. better. Yeah. And made for a delightful <laughs> listen. And uh, some shout outs to Leah and Tori. Thank you. And Turbulence28, who's always our go to fact checker. Ah, I love you guys. So thank you guys. That's, That's why I fact checked Turbulence. That's why I brought up that Beck, <laughs> that Beck uh, comment there. Okay, so, so we were talking about Jebediah. Oh, yeah. Are we? Do you have anything else? No. Nope. nope. Great. Great performance. Um, I think uh, Cecily and Colin are going to be almost. Jimmy and Tina esque. Oh wow, that's except wow. For, for that. t- Colin has a different personality than Jimmy, so I'm not saying they're very similar. It's just they have that potential of having that great chemistry. Colin is a lot more Seth like. I mean, he's a right. They're they were they're mainly writers. That's what yeah. Seth was before he came on the show. And I think and they're but that's Tina why they're was a writer similar. though too. And I'm okay. I'm, so I mentioned this with Jebediah, and this is what I like to see that Jimmy and Seth both did. They'll say a joke, and then Seth would give like almost that smile afterwards, like I know that was terrible, but it's funny. Like he's laughing with us at home. Yeah. I want to see and Jimmy. Jimmy, obviously Jimmy would just known start laughing. <laughs> I want to see that from Colin a little bit. Yeah. Because it makes me feel like like I would get to know him a little better. Like, what is his humor? It, it, do you think that joke is funny, Colin? Laugh at it. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Like, I'm laughing. Can I laugh with you kind of thing? That's what I, I that will make me like Well, it's just more. this first show. I think there's still more yeah. to come. No, I'm not mad at it. I'm saying these are yeah. the kind of things. That I'm, not mad. I'm, not, yeah, I'm <laughs> not mad. I'm not mad. So, let's move on to, the, so this is actually my favorite. This is what I put down stars and asterisks to make sure I didn't forget. Murder Mystery Dinner. I think I really like childish humor, and that's why it's one of my favorites. Um, <laughs> because it's about the uh, family or friends going out for a birthday dinner uh-huh. to a murder mystery where they pretend they are people and they have cards. And uh, Jim Parsons plays Simply Dudley, harmless oversex nutball. <laughs> what and, is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> and every card he gets, he has to do something sexual, and he doesn't want to do it. Mm-hmm. And I just thought it was great. It but, was it was interesting seeing Jim play a straight man, like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't going. mean it like that. No. <laughs> no, just like like not like this goofy over the top character. Like he was supposed to be like the normal guy in the sketch. Like your ho hum neighbor Dave. Yeah, your ho hum yeah. neighbor Dave. And so it was. I think, and this is kind of probably where the fact that he hates people always think of him as Sheldon. It kind of was hard for me to get into it because I didn't believe him. You were watching, you wanted to see Sheldon. I well, I want. <laughs> I just wanted to see something a little quirkier, and okay. I I'm not as I don't I'm not as easily amused by the potty humor, Roya. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just easily entertained that way. <laughs> But I, when he tries to tickle the maid, he's like, uh, Taryn comes in, whoa, 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 you're not supposed to touch the actors. Do not touch the actors. And he's trying I to- thought Taryn did a great job with that sketch. He even like- messed up at the beginning. He he, mm-hmm. me- he fumbled yeah. his words. He almost said, it's not like he almost said he was going to cuss. Mm-hmm. He just, and, but, he, but he was very professional about it. And he just Excuse kept going. Excuse me. And he kept yeah. going. Yeah. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. I really liked it. Can we go to a murder mystery dinner? Are there any here? Not if it's three hundred and sixty-five dollars. <laughs> How much are those things for real? True story. Well, he might have paid for everybody. He might have. Um, for me, this one fell a little short. 
uh, I didn't, I wanted it to do more and it was kind of the same thing. Like it was the same joke and I wanted to see it get a little darker, like move to another room, get a scenario where they're all involved and it gets really <laughs> awkward. Like it gets really awkward. Cause I feel like that's the play here is it's like, it's awkward. So have them like get in a physical scenario. Like maybe he has to like get behind the maid and he's supposed I to like, agree. well, yeah. he tried, he tried fondling her or tickling yeah, her. And that was, that was like the crux. <laughs> and for me, that was like the crux of it. Like, okay, that was funny. Like the end, end when they switch, like, okay, if you're going to switch characters then like do something with it, they yeah. switch. And the only, it was, there was one joke after that, that, okay, now it says go to town on the maid, which is funny, but like that wasn't a big enough joke for me I to wanted to it. see them going down and yes, sit for I dinner. Yes, I wanted to see it get darker. Dinner, it's a dark idea. You know what I mean? Murder mm -hmm. mystery, like it's a dark idea to begin with. I wanted to see it go dark. I remember when we had Kevin Farley on, he yeah. said, I like it when sketches go dark because it adds an element that we don't expect and that's an element I would like to see here. Absolutely. Sure. Well, I'm going to break this tension and only way I can. Lucky okay. for me, I date dead girls. That was the line <laughs> that I really enjoyed. Really? <laughs> yes. Why did you enjoy that line so much? Because it was just funny. He didn't want to read it and he had to read Okay. Anyways. <laughs> This is getting really awkward for me because no one wants to agree with me about this sketch. But Let's I gave it an A+. Plus. What? <laughs> Who? You Whoa. what? Marissa. Can we kick her Marissa, off? Marissa, can I ask you a question? <laughs> yes. Be yes. really honest. Did you see SNL on Saturday? I know you're really busy, so if you didn't, it's okay. I did not. So, just from me listening to us, do you think it's crazy that Roya gives out A-pluses so easy? I think she doles them out pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's all I want to know. Thank I you, Marissa. I would kind of agree with Keaton, you know. They're kind of like gold medals. You you have to earn them. Gotta earn <laughs> them. Gotta nuggets. earn them. I would give I would give this sketch a C minus. I mean, hey, if it's but if it's your humor, nobody can knock you for that. That's what yeah. you love. Again, I'm that, just that's what's you. great about SNL is they they hit for the, everyone. Yeah, they're for everyone. Mariah. Everyone. <laughs> Poor Mariah. We're just like this is what happened when Danny comes back. Yeah. I oh, thought I'm me just... and you were gonna be fighting this whole episode, but now look how the tables have <laughs> turned. Literally. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. I'm just kidding. Okay, next next is one. Spotlights on acting camp for serious kids. I... Not as good as the first time. Not as good the first yeah. time, but With oh Lady my Gaga, gosh, yeah. she's so good at being that awkward kid. I, what, I can't even remember a line that she's Vanessa. Oh, okay. I can't remember a line she says, but she's so good at playing that line. She just talks like this, and everything I'm doing. I is think performing. I want to go to the villain. Like, yeah. Whatever she says is fantastic. I, I hers is my favorite. Oh, they did do it again. I am captain now. Yeah. Yeah. Again. Um. Darn. Danny is right. Danny is right. So twice in one episode. <laughs> Barkat Abdi. Thank you very much. Um. Second favorite though, out of all of them that played kid actors, was Jim Parsons. Yes, yeah, Jim Parsons Vanessa, did do well. He did a great job. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, almost as good. If, if I hadn't seen Vanessa Bayer do it before, I might say they were on the same one. But I was when she wanted anything she said, I was looking forward to like whatever comes out of her mouth because mm -hmm. it's so funny that that vocal tone and like that little like lisp she puts on is. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I just liked when Taryn and AD kissed, and right after they the kids make that face like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Beck performs again, and you guys already talked about it. You enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. His new song "Wave," mm -hmm. hauntingly beautiful with the orchestra, is literally what I wrote. And then the next sketch is the elevator ride. Um, <laughs> okay, so I know I said I have really childish oh, wait, humor. Before I we talk about this, for those of you that are watching, if you uh, there was a hockey game that ran over late, so. It started late, so if your DVR didn't get all this, no, it's for the last sketch. I'm sorry. There's one oh, more sketch there's... after this, the cowboy sketch, oh, the no, cowboy I got birthday that. sketch. No. Okay. Well, it's a lot of people missed it oh. because the oh. because it started late. SNL mm. started late. Anyway, okay. sorry. My bad. My bad. So the elevator ride. Yes, the um, elevator ride. So I know I said I have very childish humor, uh, but <laughs> uh, poopy humor. Yeah. I thought this was funny. <laughs> I thought this was very funny. <laughs> it made me so uncomfortable. It made me so uncomfortable. I like that it took them forever to come out and say, like they never directly said what happened. He was just, but he was holding his underwear here for the whole first part of the sketch <laughs> in the bag. Nobody would do that. But it's funny because you're kind of like, wait, what is he holding? And then once you realize like, Oh my God! Why was he? He was actually like. Holding I thought it. he killed somebody because his hands look like they're a little bit red. If you rewatch it, his hands have a different coloring to them. Really? And I thought that's why he was acting nervous. <laughs> oh, I didn't notice that. And that's then gross. they mentioned the explosion, and I was like, Oh, did he do something that caused an explosion? And then it led into <laughs> oh him. Oh my God! Oh no! I got himself. I got dump in your pants. Like I got that. He I got sharded. it right away. Yeah. I got that he, he sharded absolutely right away. Sharded. Like kind of like when they, they said I don't know if you guys read the news story about Al Roker like pooped his pants at the at the White House. No, he didn't. He sharded at the White House. Look at. <laughs> Yeah, and so that's oh all god. I could think of was, oh my god, this is how Al Roker felt. <laughs> okay, correct me if I'm wrong. Did they? Use, they didn't use the word shart at all, though. No. no. I was so hoping that the way, like, that maybe like Jim Parsons all of a sudden broke down. I was like, okay, fine, I sharted my pants or something. You know what I mean? Like, 
Uh, it reminded me of the scene in Anchorman where he comes out with that Black Panther like oh, cologne on, sex, and everyone's sex like, or Sex Panther. Everyone's like, like, it oh. smells like a baby's diaper it with Indian like, food. It smells like the inside of a it fake smells leg. Like Bigfoot's dick. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that's what I wanted to be able to start Yes. Yeah. But why would they stay in the damn elevator? That, it was frustrating. I was like, just get out of the elevator. Walk down the stairs, Jim. Walk down the stairs. Uh, situationally, great sketch. Uh, for me, it was, it was fantastic. I think there's a lot of people that can relate to that. Like, a lot of people have had a moment. Maybe not they've jumped Danny, on an elevator with their underwear. But Do you want to tell us something? Okay, come on. Let's be honest. This happens to people. Maybe not a bomb explosion goes off. Did you poop your off. pants? <laughs> He's getting very defensive. I kind of yes, <laughs> I've sharted before. It oh, happens. Do you there are lying? It goes. Hold on. You guys are lying if you're telling me you're the only. I'm the only one in the room that's sharted before. I'm not I sharted. I'm not either. Get oh. out of here, Marissa. Save me, please. I haven't sharted. You didn't shart during your root canal this morning. No. <laughs> not, not that Why you know of. They Why knock you out for that. Oh my gosh, really? Now Guys, we're all going to shart in the next week. I got to ask. I got to ask. Karma's going to be a bitch to us. Hold on. I got to ask you guys that are listening and watching. Let us know. I want to know what percentage you guys I have don't know. or have not. I don't want to know if you've sharted. It's something that happens. Okay, just, moving on. Just uh, dra- DM Danny here on Twitter. It's if at you Danny started. Hoyt. D A N N Y H O Y T. I want to know you if you sh- have You can start a support group for. Oh my gosh. My name's Danny Hoyt, and I've sharted. <laughs> Guys, it's not that oh, rare. Oh man! All right, next. Wow, <laughs> we're getting real close. Oh, and oh, no, are you really happy where you're sitting now? <laughs> not today. It's been a couple years, I have, but I, I remember like the last. I have like this innate fear now that I'm gonna shart and I have white pants on today. <laughs> uh, I did like the last part of the sketch though, when they they show the shot of the Burj Khalifa. He's like, "How long is this elevator ride?" And then oh, they man. zoom out, and it's the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building mm-hmm, in the world. Yeah. I really enjoyed how they filmed it where there's like, oh, we're getting into an elevator. And then you see the doors shut, but it's not the doors. It's the lighting. Anyways, that was my own. No, that was, was, that was, was clever. Door. I, I, I was thinking, I thought the same thing. Right? There was an actual door that shut at the beginning. When Mike no, first... it just opened. It yeah. opened to reveal, but they ne- the then door they never closer. shut again. It just it was a lighting change because mm-hmm. the oh, camera, okay. it would have cut off the camera. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Welcome to television. Oh, okay, well, magical. hold on. Actually, though, there was a door that almost shut at the beginning. When John first comes in, he sticks his hand and stops an actual door at the beginning. Watch it again. Yeah, that's right. what I said yeah. at the beginning. But okay. it, it pulls forward. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying there's never a door. The camera. I was like, you know, you guys, there was a door. We're going to okay. kick you off the there table There was a door. <laughs> All right. All right. We're, we're, we're in the home stretch, guys. All right, guys. Keep going. The next sketch is this, I was saying some people might have missed this This sketch. was the last one, yes. Dwayne's birthday, the cowboy, where Clem wants to pop out of the... I almost said poop because of our conversation. <laughs> Clem wants to pop out of the ground for a birthday surprise. Meanwhile, the rest of the gang just wants to give cards. The cowboy birthday party debate. Yeah, I don't... Mm, yeah. It kind of... Yeah. It was a, li- it was a little It awkward. ended very like, bam, done. Yeah, he shot him in the butt yeah. like nine times, <laughs> yes. right in his butt. He's like that was Clem. And then he says, "Yeah," and he says that was Clem. Yeah. Uh, it was a little awkward for an ending sketch for me, for the like the end sketch of the night. Yeah, I wish they would have switched this one to the last one, but yeah. if they would have, I might have not watched the last one. I don't know. I just didn't. Yeah. The sketch didn't well. like resonate with me at all. And when like I it first started, I was like Cowboys. I was like, are they gonna do a Dallas Buyers Club thing? Or are they gonna do a Brookback Mountain thing? Like <laughs> those are like the two directions my mind went. Yeah. I which I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> I don't know. I just I wanted I wanted another Oscar like spoof. Okay. I yeah. really did. I one of my favorite lines though in the sketch was uh when one of the cowboys go, I don't think he's gonna want a naked man flying at him and Jim replies, No one wants until they get one. Yeah, no, <laughs> no one wants until they get it. Yeah. Yes, I actually wrote that down. That was my favorite line. No one wants it until they get it. <laughs> Nobody wants it until yeah. they get it. Yes. And I love how Clem was so eager to do it and just wanted just to be naked. He's like, All right, well you can paint me and Kim's like, No, why would we waste our time doing that? And they're all signing the cards and they have different kind of cards. It was I didn't give it a grade, apparently. What is this? Was it a spoof of something that I don't know about? Like, what was it? It reminds me of some of their older sketches that they would do with the Cowboys type of theme. But it doesn't, not Three with amigos. birthdays. Yeah, it just fell short because there was so much more that I thought could be done. Like, it was I my least favorite too many people were involved. Well, like, Keenan, there were too Keenan, many guys, Keenan like didn't Cowboys. have any funny parts. Yeah, yeah, there were too many guys involved. It should have just been a couple. It could have been, you know what it could have been? It could have been like a Bill Brasky type sketch. Where like, <laughs> Bill Bra- like, they could have done something where it was a lot more zoomed in. Everybody has a punchline. Mm, it yeah. moves faster. But the crux of the sketch, I use that word crux a lot tonight. The crux of the sketch wasn't funny for me, and so I didn't find any. Get any a broader vocabulary. <laughs> the pinnacle, so the top of the mountain. My question about this whole overall episode. Yeah. 
Why was there no Kyle and Beck sketch or a Jay Farrell sketch? Why well, there was only one short, and it was the Bird Bible, correct? Yeah. There was only yeah. one like digital short was the Bird Bible. Well, or no, 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 the no, twelve no, no. slaves, the twelve, the 12, years, of the 12 slave. years of slave. Yeah, twelve years of slave. Okay. Could have been, but does that really count as one? Mm -hmm. It wasn't the Jay Farrell esque or um, Beck Bennett. You would have figured Lee. they had a whole freaking month to do. I mean, you know, they love not doing live sketches so much with this cast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe that's why. Maybe they they heard a little bit of an outcry and they were like, okay, well, we'll show you what we got. Yeah, maybe, and I'm I'm happy with it. I thought I thought a lot of people showed a lot of. Awesome. Yeah. So <laughs> overall, what would you give this sketch this with Jim Parsons King? posting? Uh, I would give it a B plus. Minus. B minus for me. B minus. B. I'm gonna give it a B. I'm gonna give it a B because oh, it felt did short. Did my? Did you? Did I just sway your you opinion? You did sway my opinion. I'm. So... Now, is it because of the writing or is it because of the hosting? Uh, a little bit of both, but not so much hosting. Maybe more for writing. That's a great question because Jim, for me, when they gave him a spot, he nailed what he did. Mm -hmm. I just don't feel like there was as many like home run sketches. There yeah. was a lot of like second base sketches for me. There was two or three third base and one home run. And I like to see more like third. We're going with the baseball analogy here. I'm just going right through it. <laughs> but I want to see a lot more like tens. And there was a lot of like six and seven. He wanted to laugh so hard he sharded. Gosh, <laughs> nailed it. That was good, Keaton. <laughs> Okay. Well, I mean, I kind of gave it like a B plus, A minus. Okay. Because I, I thought he did, like you said, he did he, what he was given. He did well. I think his hosting was really yeah. well, but I would give it a B overall. He'll and get, he'll and get we got a new, a new cast member, so mm -hmm. there's potential of even more for things growth. that could happen. So let's go into uh, predictions for next week. Mercer is now, right on it. You're after right on it. TV yes. predictions. Predictions. Oh. Lena Dunham. Uh, yes, Lena Dunham from Girls, musical performance by The National. Well, The National's going to kill it. I'll tell you that right now. But I want to know, what do you guys think Lena, do you think she's going to do anything as it relates to Girls? She's going to be naked. She's going to be naked. Let's, There's let's going to be a blurred out, full on, buck naked. Something's got to so, happen. Do you think it's going to be in her monologue or do you think it's going to be in a no, sketch? No, 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 no. It'll be a sketch. Yeah. And I think she's gonna get a couple of the other cast members at least in nude. It might be like naked. a whole like blurred out like, like just whole nude yeah, nude. thing. Like a whole thing will be nude. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I think it'll be after. I'll tell you exactly what I think it'll be. I think it'll be the first sketch after the second musical performance. Okay. I'm okay. gonna write that. Write down. it down. So you said first sketch after the second musical performance. I'm excited to see where this where this episode is gonna go because I really don't have I don't know much about Lena Dunham. I haven't mm -hmm. seen I don't see I haven't seen girls. I haven't seen her in much, and I also don't know much about the Nationals. So I'm gonna be very excited to kind of be introduced to you know the band and as well as the uh, the host and kind of yeah. feel them out, see how I feel because I have no preconceived notions about them. That's I have a no great place to be. Don't read yeah. anything this week. Mm -hmm. let I'm it stay, not going to. Let it stay that way till you watch it because that that'll be really in interesting to hear perspective i also don't i'm not very versed in lena dunham mm -hmm. um i don't watch girls it's not a show that i've started yet it's something i'd like to watch i hear great things one thing i will say is i think when i hear people talk about her on tv or you hear on the radio they talk about lena dunham or reviews that you read guys and girls alike have the same positive things to say about her like they both respect her in the same well, she's a writer yeah. so she so it'll be interesting to see how much you know she's in there, she's and they're there. In yeah, she's That's involved true. in the sketches, and I feel like someone like her who does like com like comedy writing. I feel like she it's gonna be very hands on. I think that's gonna be apparent in the types of that she's gonna be leading a lot of sketches. I hope so. Question: Do you guys think they are gonna do a girls uh, parody Spoof? like they did with? They Tina might Fey. do. They might do a boys. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I think they will do a girls because it's on uh, HBO. HBO, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's on HBO, uh, and that's a smaller audience. They might be able to pull in more audience if people love Lena and they're like, oh my gosh, is this kind of what like Girls is like? Is this what she's like on the show? I maybe should watch this. They might be able. They might have a chance to pull an audience okay, here. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I think they might. I hope they bring back the baby uh, character uh, played by Beck Bennett <laughs> yeah. and Drunk Uncle has to make an appearance on Weekend Update. You he think has to. You think too, too soon? Too soon? Going through, no. Going through withdrawals? I'm going through so much You miss your drunk uncle. I do, and especially since the Oscars are done, maybe they'll use that as a... Like way to talk about it. Do you it. think they're gonna make fun of anything that happened at the Oscars? Maybe the tweeting, the Twitter thing. The Twitter, like, oh my Twitter gosh. is shut down <laughs> for twenty minutes. The best photo bomb ever by uh, Lupita. Kevin Nyong Spacey. No, Lupita oh, Lupita Nyong Nyong brother? brother. Yes, he had he's... prime real estate in the photo. Oh, he had the whole thing oh, just cheesing like, with his flat. So, like, anyways, blocked out Angelina Jolie. Maybe they'll spoof it. They might. That'd be a great. That thing would to be spoof. a great spoof. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Good call. Sweet. Well, guys, that might be the opening sketch. Would be a news. I, I say oh, the, a news report about Twitter is down. Like maybe in in the Twitter 
like because offices they have Ellen. or yeah, they have Ellen. To carry. They do have an Ellen. That's true. So. Think they'll do it again? And Ellen maybe, again? Maybe. Bring back? I don't mind if they do. I feel know. like we're gonna get a Kelly Ripa and Michael Strahan because they they did host the after the Oscars today. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, so I think yes. and I and I. Which love shout them. out to Maria. She looked uh, phenomenal she this did. morning. Maria. If you guys see Maria, amazing. She actually got the first photo bomb with Michael Strahan. Uh, oh, I saw that. Shut it down, out, so. Maria. <laughs> Cool guys. Well, where can we find you, lovely people? Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at KeatonM33, uh, as well as on Instagram. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Danny Hoyt. It's D-A-N-N-Y-H-O-Y-T. Perfect. And you guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram as well. That's at HeyRoya, H-E-Y-R-O-Y-A. And guys, thank you so much. And we'll see you next week. We yeah. love you. Mwah. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.